something that adds to why I tend to watch more right-wing content than left-wing content is that right-wing commentators tend to understand the left's arguments more than left-wing commentators tend to really understand the right-wing's arguments. It should be the other way around. To be fair, both sides create straw men just as much. But I simply think the right wing tends to get the left's arguments more than the other way around. Granted, I mean, to be fair, a lot of right wingers push this notion that uh, well, all the things that the left wants to implement will lead to communism. Though, to be fair, uh, some of these commentators plot out exactly how that would happen. But still, it's a bunch of fear mongering, really. So many left-wing commentators assign completely false motives to right-wingers. They continually leave out important pieces of information in their rebuttals that completely change what the motive would be, even if that information was in an audio or video clip that they just provided. There's a lot of pretending to not understand what the other side is really saying. Either that, or they're so bad at putting on other people's mindsets that the only thing that they can put on a mindset of is Hitler. Look how often discussions get Godwind. That's when people uh, compare it to Hitler, right? If right-wingers want reasonable limits on several things, things that I've talked about in some of my recent videos, popular left-wingers virtually always interpret it as fascism, no matter how small or insignificant those limits might be. Then when right-wing commentators say that the left wants no limits on those things, the left says they're being strawmanned when it's simply not a strawman. Like with abortion, the argument is, that should be a decision between the doctor and their patient. And when someone says, well, I guess you think there should be no restrictions at all, no holds barred, according to the law, and they'll reply with, I didn't say that, you're putting words in my mouth. Well then, what restrictions should there be on abortions? And the answer again, like clockwork, is it should be a choice between the doctor and their patients. As if that somehow absolves them from describing a limit. Or as if that is a designated limit. In actuality, they think there shouldn't be any legal limits. But they'll never actually say that because then the right-wingers would be right about something. The discussion will never go any deeper or further. They'll just keep repeating that same line over and over again. It's their way of ending the discussion. It's the equivalent of someone saying, I said maybe, and that's final. It's complete and total BS. Same with activist teachers. As long as the activism isn't Christian, some of these people want no limits whatsoever and claim freedom of speech on teachers' behalves. I'm betting for many, they wouldn't even object to public schools teaching certain elements about Islam and claim that it's all about cultural enrichment. If you say that these people want no limits... They'll claim you're strawmanning them. And when you ask them what limits should be there, they'll make a generic statement again that they think absolves them from actually having to describe a limit. They simply won't do it. Again, it's the equivalent of, I said maybe and that's final. Once you see these patterns, among many others, you just can't unsee them. Not being willing to put limits on a whole shit ton of things is why or is one of the reasons why we're in quite the pickle we're in right now. Hey, maybe we should decriminalize more crimes. I'm sure it will help the crime statistics and take care of inequalities at the same time. I mean, as long as there's fewer people in jail, things must be going swimmingly, right? And so when I see so many left-wing commentators God-winning so many arguments from the right, or assigning malice and evilness where it doesn't exist, it makes it very difficult to take them seriously. Why would I want to waste my time listening to one-way ideological messaging that doesn't actually listen to the other side? In my opinion, one of the worst popular left-wing commentators is Lance from the Surf Times. He'll constantly and blatantly misinterpret something and then attempt to make a joke about it for several minutes with a smug attitude the whole time. Like he's playing a character that pretends not to understand something and that's supposedly what makes it funny. It's Lance's primary style of humor. It's very rare that he truly understands the mindsets he's arguing against. Perhaps he does actually understand, and he's just playing a character, you know, for the laughs and the money. Perhaps he's really that unobservant and apathetic that he really doesn't get it. To me, he's also the worst member of a political YouTube group that goes on StreamYard, entitled The Leftist Mafia. Mike, from The Humanist Report, 
who is also a member of the leftist mafia, can be decent sometimes. He's usually pretty thorough. He tries to source what he's speaking against, show the actual texts. But he often lets ideology get in the way of the truth. For instance, he would never say anything that could put his own demographic in a bad light. The absolute worst, corniest, most cringy left-wing commentator that I've ever run across on YouTube. A channel that's not huge, but it's not a startup either, that tries to take itself seriously, that's far worse than Lance, is a channel called The Ghost. I don't think he ever interprets what right-wingers do and say in a reasonable or realistic way. He's always grifting. He's always fake. He always tries to look outraged or laughingly confused, like the face he displays on his banner. With constant corny phrases like, You've got to be kidding me! It's really, truly the worst. If you want a good cringe, check out his channel. I miss the old Sam Cedar, who used to be more logic and rationality based. He was fairly non-ideological. I miss the old Amazing Atheist, even though he did have a lot of cringy content. But the stuff that wasn't cringe was fantastic. I wish Jimmy Dore wasn't such a big-time grifter, because he often brings up good points. I wish David Pakman didn't play it safe so much. I wish the Young Turks and all their associated channels weren't such heavy-duty grifters as well. And there are so many content creators that stopped making content years ago that I really miss. And don't get me wrong, there's a lot of grifting going on on both sides. I mean, if the money they make from these videos is their primary source of income, there's naturally going to be a certain amount of grifting. I just think some people do it a lot more blatantly than others. I mean, it's fine to bring up controversial topics, but when you actually don't feel one way or the other about the topic, and you bring it up just to get money from views, that's some pretty blatant grifting. Which kind of sucks. But you know, to be honest, it's fine once in a while. But if you genuinely care about the subjects you talk about, then even if it is grifting, at least it's how you feel. I can respect that. I do like some of Bill Maher's monologues. Not all of them, but some of them are pretty cool. I love that Jon Stewart is back on The Daily Show at least once a week. He criticizes both sides in very humorous ways. I love his stuff. At least when he has the writers that he has. I, I wasn't as much of a fan when he was on that Apple show, so... Anyway, I'm not sure what to add more to this longer video, so thanks for watching.